Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good people. How are you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing fantastic on this awesome, awesome Friday morning, man. This is the Entrepreneur Chat. We are basically a group of entrepreneurs meeting every weekday between 8 and 9. That's Monday to Friday to talk different aspects of entrepreneurship, different aspects of business so that we can inspire and empower each other to reach the highest level of expression in our entrepreneurial calling. So guys, man, so fantastic today, man. I'm super excited. We are going to be with the Pumlo Joker. He's basically the founder of global leadership consultants out in the eastern cape so we're going to be hearing a bit of his story and a bit of what they do as a company to assist um you know entrepreneurs right to inspire and empower entrepreneurs let's see are you on the road yeah man i've just been stuck in traffic but i'm just two minutes away from home so i should be home in the next two to three minutes in the next two to three minutes yeah (laughs) Nah, it's fine, man. I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? Um, awesome, man. I'm excited to be in this platform. I'm a big fan. I said that to you when I uh, spoke to you over the phone. You're doing amazing, amazing work, my brother. No, thank you. Thank you, man, for the feedback, man. Why so early, man? Up and early on the road. My, you know, my, my wife flew, flew out late last night to Johannesburg. She's attending... Um, and our entrepreneurship and business development event this weekend. Her sister stays in Joburg, so I'm alone here with my kids. So I had to go early, early and just go drop him off at school. Nah, that's super, man. And so yeah. how's it out there in the in the Eastern Cape? East London, is it? Port Elizabeth, actually. Port Elizabeth, sorry, in, man. Mount, Mount <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Nah, now called Kobeja. Can you pronounce Kobeja? Kobeja. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. Kobeja is great. Uh, the, Eastern Cape, the Eastern Cape is good. Um, obviously, uh, we've got a lot of challenges out here. Um, political uh, challenges and uh, developmental challenges. But we, 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 we're trying to make it work with, with what we have. No, that's super, man. So, so tell us about yourself. So where do you come in, bro, uh, in terms of, you know, resolving, you know, you know, or providing the answer, man, or being part of that solution, you know, from an entrepreneur point of view uh, and the likes? Because, I mean, entrepreneurship, uh, I mean, we are talking the last time and... Your words were, were it's the answer, and, and that's what I believe. Yes. No, look, um, we, we, we know the problems of the country. I always say that we spend so much of time in our conversations speaking about the problems of South Africa and of Africa. We, I, I, I think everyone on this platform knows what the problems are, but I think... There are very few platforms that are able to create um, or that are able to uh, or that enable uh, a conversation that is centered around solutions. So I do think that um, with some of the problems that our country is facing, um, one of them being unemployment, I do believe that uh, entrepreneurship for me is one of the key solutions. And I mean, uh, I mean, what I mean by that is if we're able to support entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, um, I don't think the government uh, has the capacity and has the uh, resources um, to create the jobs that is always speaking about. Uh, I mean, you, politicians will come up and always say, um, I think the president said, I think two or three years ago, um, that he they're going to create 1 million jobs or something like that, (laughs) you know, by 2030. And if you look at how he's doing now, instead of creating the jobs, we're losing jobs, you know? So I think, Mm. you know, uh, uh, having entrepreneurs 
in all corners of South Africa for me is very, very important. Maybe let me just step out of the car and walk in. I hope you don't mind. I'm going to walk. No, no worries, man. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, we are, we, are, we are live. We are real. You know, it's what is happening yeah. in real time right now. You know, so man, we, we thank you, man, for, for, for even coming through even with all these schedules, man. Yeah, so I think uh, entrepreneurship is a very important. Okay, no, we just we just losing you a bit there. So, okay, I'll, I'll I'll get you back in. I'll get you back in. So you can request okay. once you have settled. Are you cool now? I'm cool. No, I've settled. I've settled. I've settled. Ah, no, so that's cool, man. We're gonna can continue. You... Can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Awesome, awesome. What I was saying was, um, entrepreneurship becomes part of the answer in our country when we all create a conducive, conducive environment for entrepreneurs to thrive and to grow. So that can be from the, from the point of view of creating, enabling policies uh, for entrepreneurs, um, you know, de- doing away with all of the red tape and all of that uh, from a government perspective, but also from us as just ordinary South Africans, making sure that, uh, number one, we're not too scared to step out and start our own businesses, but also we support those smaller businesses that are around us. The mom that's selling fruit and veg, you know, instead of going and buying a checkers, I would always say try and buy from the from the mother that's down the road that's selling um, the same quality but maybe at a cheaper price and that's supporting her two children and all of that. So I really think that um, if, if we were to inject this mindset of entrepreneurship, especially with younger South Africans, we do a lot of work in townships where we work with emerging entrepreneurs. So people starting car washes, people selling fruit and veg, people um, you know, producing, manufacturing bricks. And for, for, for me, it's beautiful to see how when those people succeed, the community succeeds too. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, that's directly, that's like direct success. Yeah. You know, because if that, if that mama has got money to take the children to school and all these things, then the ripple effect, I mean, it's, 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 uh, you know, you, you, you can't count that, right? It's, 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 uh, it's invaluable at the end of the day. It's invaluable. Great. So cool, man. So tell us about yourself, guy, <laughs> and your company and what you do. Uh, man, we just jump straight into it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And, so, yeah. yeah, again, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm a big fan of what you're doing. My name is Lupumlo. Um, almost a decade ago, I started a company called Global Leadership Consultants. We're based in the Eastern Cape. And the whole, we are a business and leadership development firm. We started out actually as a leadership development firm. And when I started, I started because I saw, um, you know, number one, how the SRC at that time at Nelson Mandela University had, I think their budget was a 3 million rand budget. And they were just spending it on parties and stuff like that. And, you know and, how it is. You know how it goes. You know, man. <laughs> man, man SRCs, like at this man, those guys are the best parties, bro. The best <laughs> parties, man. I mean, those guys are the best parties, man. I mean, yo, yeah. You know, and, and that for me, my brother, I thought, man, there's such a huge disconnect between what these guys say and what they do. So we, we first started out, so I had I had in me the burden to um, <clears throat> sort of equip um, younger South Africans <clears throat> in terms of how they can lead better. So that's how we started. So we started out by training. Um, I remember I first hijacked a house com meeting. Wow. You know, so I, I stayed at rest and um, the, um, what are they called? Um, house committee members were having a meeting. Then I said, hey man, can I just come and talk about leadership? Uh, and then I did that, took the pictures, put them out on Facebook, and then there was just a ripple effect. You know, people wow. started asking, oh, what is this? What are you doing? And that's how I built the business. You know, mm. spent the first four years uh, literally 
um, you know, making a lot. You know, I wasn't, I was barely surviving the first four years of the business. Um, I'm, and I'm, and I'm always, uh, you know, transparent about my numbers. Year number five, I, I, I made about a hundred k that year. Uh, year number six, I made about half a million. Year number seven, I went over the million rand mark. So I started to see, wow. oh, and there's something here, and we've been, we've been growing and building from then. Wow, man, that's amazing, man. So, so what sort of work do you do uh, in terms of, uh, you know, your guys? I'm checking out your website here. You know, there is quite a bit, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, leadership. I mean, you personally, you're a speaker, you're an author. <laughs> so what else are you guys doing, man? So we, um, so skills development is a big thing. So we are, we provide accredited training uh, for, um, you know, different companies. We provide business development and support to emerging and established entrepreneurs. So there are quite a number or a few people actually that we've assisted to access financing from the government. Um, there's a guy in East London that just got funded half a million through the business plan we developed for him. So in terms of business development and support, we'll provide you know, the assistance to make sure that your business plan is up to par. Uh, we'll you know, link you to the funder that would be best suited to fund your venture, um, you know. So we'll take you from idea generation phase, you know, establishing your company, business planning, um, to your funding facilitation. We provide some coaching as well to some clients. So we just finished up a project in Carrieja. Carrieja is Utenic that was sponsored by VW, where we are coaching about a 15 um, township-based businesses, you know. So in terms of business and development and support, there are a variety of things that we do. In terms of leadership development, uh, we are very adamant and specific about developing the emerging uh, layer of leaders. So we we'll speak about um, high school leadership development, so that would be your prefects. We've got an amazing course for them. Then your SRCs, you know, we've got quite an amazing course a leadership development course for SRCs, you know. So in a nutshell, we are a business and leadership development firm, and we're just passionate about nation building. Wow, man. Hey, dude, I mean, you're, you know, you're summarizing so much, because I know you do so much, bro. So guys, to be honest with you, what I'll just say is, man, just go and follow uh, Lupumlo right now, man. That's, that's the best you can do, because, like, there's so much that these guys are doing. You know, there's so much that he's doing, so we can't finish everything right now, like in this live here. We're not going to be able to do that. So I'll just say, you know, I'll check him out. He's got a lot of content, man. I'm just checking your social media. So, <laughs> so, I, so I say to you, obviously, so I just checked, you know, <laughs> and I, I think you follow, you liked one of my, uh, one of the videos I posted. So yeah. I just go through just the notifications. Then I'm like, okay, so I checked you out. Then I'm like, okay, let me go there. I'm like, okay, this yellow background. So I checked that, like, got a yellow background. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm like, so I'm like, I'm like, no, this guy has got something to say. Let me check out his profile. <laughs> so, guys, put a yellow background on your TikTok. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> but it just something that sends out there, man. But, I man. Yeah, man. But, but I see business coach, speaker, author, activist. Uh, so check out your profile you also do you know quite a bit of interviews or like you've got a podcast you know can you tell us about that and and, and why why is is that important for for you man i you know I, i've always been faced with this internal war of relocating and going to Joburg or cape town and moving away from the eastern cape because a lot of people will say hey, man, you know, things are happening in Joburg and what, what, what. So the podcast came about as we thought, man, it would be good for us to profile some of the business and political leaders that are based in the Eastern Cape that are doing amazing work, you know. Um, we've got, I mean, the Eastern Cape has produced so much of talent. The Eastern Cape has produced, has so much of amazing entrepreneurs, 
Mm. That I mean, later, politically, it's been yes, amazing. And that later, the challenge with me, uh, and this is, you know, the challenge with me is that people always flee. They, they, they leave the Eastern Cape and they go to Joburg and, you know, because there are better opportunities there. And, I'm, and, and my gospel has been, we want, uh, we want the Eastern Cape to retain its talent. So, the, you know, we launched, we launched the podcast about a month ago, you know, and, um, you know, the reception has been amazing. It's on YouTube and it's on all podcast streaming platforms. It's called The Ultimate Leadership. And that's actually the name of my first book. My first book is called The Ultimate Leadership. So, uh, and mm. the privilege of, you know, talking to some amazing people. Yesterday, we just did Musi Maimane. Yesterday, he was out oh, wow, here. Man. And then we had a nice conversation with Musi. We've done, you know, amazing people like Ethel Trollope because he's based in the Eastern Cape. You know, we've done amazing people like Mkuseli Jack. I'm not sure if you'd know him, but mm. he's an old uh, struggle stalwart that was very active uh, in the struggle in the early, in, in, in mid 80s, you know, and then joined the ANC and then left the ANC. And, you know, now he's, uh, he's joined another, but he's an amazing businessman. So there's some good content that I think we've put out there. So I think it would be great for people to just go and check it out. No, awesome, man. I see one time with DJ Spoo here and all these things. Uh, yeah, I'm checking out your, your, your YouTube right now. Guys, I said, I mean, this guy is doing a lot, guys. He's doing a lot, man. And it's just so you know, consistent. DJ Spoo, my brother, you know. So part of what we do is in our company, from time to time, we'll have leadership events, you know leadership related events so so we had dj spoo i think about three years ago and he came to launch his book what's the name of his latest book billion a under construction i think mm. so he came out here we hosted him had a good time we launched his book and it was success we had about close to a thousand people that showed up which was amazing and then uh, about four years ago we had the privilege of hosting Busi, Busi he also came down uh, for his book, um, his second book, uh, Vusi, I think it's called Vusi, Life Lessons from a Black Dragon. And that was amazing too. So we had the privilege of bringing a lot of people from all over the country to the Eastern Cape because we, we believe in the Eastern Cape and, and we believe in the talent here. And we want uh, young people to, to, to develop and to be exposed to what's happening in other provinces. No, man, that's amazing. Uh, someone's asking what's the YouTube channel. So I'm going to post that in our WhatsApp group, guys. Uh, so if you're not part of that WhatsApp group, please join the WhatsApp group. The link is in the bio in my link tree. You don't have to worry about a lot of people posting because only admins can post. Things like this, right? Uh, a fantastic YouTube link that I'm going to post. <laughs> so that's what it's about. And so that you also know when we go live and who we're going live with. So it's so amazing. But I like that point that you're saying. And I feel sometimes as Africans, we are always running, man. We are always running. We are always running. Um, and, and, it, and we are disadvantaged because we can never build up on legacy. We can never build up on what our forefathers have done because we are always running for somewhere with better opportunities. I think there's nothing wrong going to a place with better opportunities, but, but never forget home, right? Because you need, to, you need that foundation. You know, whatever your, your parent has built, whatever, whatever has happened, you know, you need to be able to build on that. Otherwise, you are going to be forever, you know, a people who are always starting and stopping. There's no transferability of wealth and all these things. I mean, we speak to a lot of people and they say like, okay, agricultural land, for example, there is land back home, man. You can make a plan, you know, make it work, you know, whether you're going to have other people there because you can imagine this, right? And I always say, that when I speak to my friends and I'm like, you know, for example, you know, us, us black people, and I know there are different races on this platform, but it's, it is what it is, right? If we look at uh, the colonial legacy, yes, we had our own systems in terms of we never knew about title deeds and all these things. Then, obviously, colonialism happened, title deeds, there was a new system. So when you are now in a new inherited system, you're trying to win in that system. But if you look someone, for example, whose great-great-father you know, was was in Kimberley, whatever, in the Diamond Rush or wherever they were. These guys, they have the title deeds that could actually, they could actually, trans they're, they're, they're traceable. You understand? That wealth is traceable. Yeah. Their bank accounts of their great-grandfathers, they are traceable. 
if they had apartments, if they had houses, if they had lands, they are traceable. That's why they are always ahead, right? That's why we, we need serious intervention to catch up. Because these people, they, they've got like four, six, seven generations of stuff that has been trans transferable and they, they've actually been seeing it. But our challenge sometimes is that your parent builds this and you abandon. You go somewhere else. You're going to do what you're doing. Your child is going to abandon. Go to Australia. Do something else. And, and it becomes a, I mean, generationally, we are shooting ourselves in the foot. That's what I think. I'm not saying don't move for other opportunities, but I'm just saying as you go forward, don't remember where, you're, don't forget where you're coming from and what you can do with it. No, I totally agree, my brother. Um, I just want to double click on one of the things that you said. You know, you, you, you made such a powerful statement and you, you said we are always running. Um, and one of the things that Vusi actually speaks about in, in one of his books is this whole idea of running away from something and running towards something. You know, a lot of us, um, mm. you know, we start our businesses for different reasons. We, you know, we start our businesses because we are running away from poverty. For some, we start our businesses because we are running away maybe from certain people or whatever the case is. But I don't, I, as, you, as you've been saying, I don't think that's entirely bad, you know, um, you know because we have to escape um, the traumatic um, experiences and the traumatic um, places and, you know, whatever we've been through. I, I don't think that's a bad thing. But what I do think is that it's important for entrepreneurs to inculcate this element of being purpose-driven into their businesses, uh, you know, and this is what I mean by that. I, my purpose in business is not ultimately to become rich and make lots of money. So I want to, firstly, I want to make money. I want to be comfortable. And I've been blessed in that I'm comfortable. I'm able to provide for my family. My son goes to a good school. But ultimately, I also want to add value to my community. Mm. I also want to inspire other black people from the townships. I also want to, um, you know, um, create something that I can pass on to my children. And I also, ultimately, I want to play a part in changing the narrative of the Eastern Cape. So I think that for me is, if we are, we are to put all of these things on a scale, it weighs higher than my desire to go to Joburg and to relocate and to make lots of money and to be comfortable with my own family. I've got a burden to develop uh, people in the Eastern Cape to add value towards the development of the Eastern Cape. And I think... That, for me, must come back into how we run our businesses. I don't think business should just be about money. It should also be about how can we better the lives of the people that we are living around? How can we make sure that um, the employees that we have, beyond the money that we pay them, how can we make sure, how can we push them to be better and to be greater and to start their own businesses? I always say to the guys that work with me that I want them to start their own businesses. I don't want mm, them to stay wow. for wow. 5, 10, 20 years. I, mm. Because there's so much, there's so many opportunities. So if you work with me, I want this entrepreneurship bug to bite you. And I want you to see practically how I live so that you can learn how you can go out and do it too. So entrepreneurs must be very growth-centered, not only for themselves, but also for the people around them. Wow, man. Hey, that's so powerful, man. I think in a dead age where most people, when they get someone who's great, they want to keep them there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. Because they don't want to lose that, 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 that bolt, right, in, in the machine. Like, let's keep them there as <laughs> that bolt, uh, which is quite crazy. But, but I think, you know, I, I like what you're saying, man. I think we, we, it will only benefit everyone, you know, once everyone else is empowered at the end of the day. And, and and what I've seen is people people won't forget, man. They they I mean, if you do that for someone who's your employee, man, they, they will never leave you. To be honest with you, they might they might change the role, but there will always be opportunities to collaborate. They will always it's just a different level of of association. Uh, I think that's that's basically you know what what it's about. So I see here that you guys you also doing. Um, 
you know, social media management, you know, team building, uh, team buildings as well, project management, ESD solutions. Just you can just touch a bit on that as well. So this this is how I run my business, you know, and mm. not to say that I, I I'm not a know it all. I haven't arrived. I still make mistakes. I'm still learning, but we there's 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 a small or the core of what we do is business and leadership development. So we're not apologetic about that. That's the core. That's the main thing. But there are other things that are attached to what we're doing that might have nothing to do with business and leadership development because we must pay the bills. For instance, um, sorry, man, you're muted a bit. I don't know if a call was coming in or something. Yeah, sorry, a call was coming in. Mm. So I was I was just making an example. Just can you hear me? Yeah, yes, I can. Yeah. So I was saying the core the core of what we're doing is business and leadership development, but um there are other things that we do that have nothing to do with that. And the example I was making just beginning of this year. I was moving paper, you know. I got a small tender to move paper from one department to another and to shred some paper. And for me, I think part of entrepreneurship is learning how to make money, you know, and learning how to do different things within this one umbrella of your business that will make sure that your business is sustainable, your people are taken care of, and that there's money in your bank account. So we do a variety of things that we some of the things we don't even put on our website, you know, because that's we don't advertise it. So what we advertise is business and leadership development. But we know that if there's, for instance, an opportunity for us to do um, catering, we'll go and do it because wow. um, catering. cash is king, you know, and we must pay the bills. So there are these small drips and pieces of things that we'll do from time to time that um, yeah have nothing to do with business and leadership. Development. So you also do catering. <laughs> <laughs> yes and no. Uh, my dog is making a noise. Okay, yes that's good. No. You can attend to it. Yeah. We do we we do and we don't. Zumbo. We do and we don't. We we do in the sense that I've got a list of people in my database that are proper caterers. Mm. Okay. So whenever there's a catering gig. I would give it to them, I would add my markup, and then I make my money, and then they go and do the job. So in that sense, we do it, but we don't because we don't have capacity to go and do catering gigs. We are mm, in the business so of making money. <laughs> I like that, man. You're the business of making money. <laughs> so no, however exactly. money comes, as long as it's, it comes in a legal way, we'll do it. I mean, I love that, man. I mean, you just have to, to, to be diverse. You know, you just have to be diverse and, and, and sort of, you know, be, be flexible in, in as much as... Because that's the thing, you know. Um, you know, our passions, you know, sometimes it, it takes, you know, if you've got like passions, passion projects and stuff, sometimes the money doesn't come there and then and, and all these things. But you always need something to support that as you are building. So I think, you know, we can't, you know, that's why I said that life is not about absolutes. You know, we should never have a life like, no, oh, absolutely, I'm doing this, nothing else, because I'm betraying the cause. If now, you know, there's there's this tender here and I'm not going to do it, you know, it's, 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 it's what it is, man. So so anyway, man, that's that's so cool. That's so cool. So with, with regards to, to to leadership, man, I, I know you, you you deal, and I know we're going to do so many other lives. You know, I know people here want to know about tenders. You know, they want to know about specific things like that, right? Um, so let's just talk about leadership. Uh, for example, when it comes to entrepreneurs, right? Uh, the guys who are on this chat here, you know, what do you, I mean, what have you seen? What, what are the, the pain points, man? And and how can we, you know, how can we improve, you know, as as uh, entrepreneurs, because it's from what you're saying is there's a time when you, I mean, first of all, you always lead yourself, right? So you're always a leader. A leader 
even if the if there's zero people, but you're yourself, you have to lead yourself mm. every day. We lead ourselves every second. We lead ourselves. Uh, so, we, we, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, what are the gaps? What should be done? Man, I think, man, this is one thing I'm really, really passionate about. Um, because, you know, I think leadership is very, very, very important. As you've rightly said, firstly, um, the ability to lead yourself as a person. What is, okay, what does that mean, right? That means that I must be able to be a highly, highly disciplined person in order to succeed in business because um, no one comes and says, hey, wake up and come and finish this project because I don't have a boss, right? And no one is mm. telling me, hey, um, you know, you have to get this done by this time and all of that. So in, in order for you to succeed as an entrepreneur, you have to be naturally a person that is highly, highly disciplined. And that high level of discipline is an element of self-leadership. Um, but in my book, I speak about this concept of um, head-centered, heart-centered, and hand-centered leadership. All right? Okay, can you so repeat I, that? Okay, so I argue in my book that we need more heart-centered leaders. And what I mean by that, you know... Um, so so I, what, what are the different centers? You said? Okay, so we've got head-centered leaders. Like head? Head-centered leaders, okay? Mm -hmm. And what I mean by head-centered leaders is those are the type of people that uh, lead from their head. They, they lead from what they know. They, you know, um, you know education and qualif formal qualifications are very important to them. Uh, you know, it's all about, um, you know, crossing their I's and dotting their T's, you know? And it's, mm. you know, those are head-centered leaders. Then you have what you call... Um, hand-centered leaders, okay? And those are people, are action people. They just like getting things done, you know? Um, and then you've got what you call heart-centered leaders. They lead from the very core of their being. They lead from who they are and not what they necessarily know, okay? So I argue in the book that you need, um, you need to be head-smart, you need to be uh, heart-smart, and you also equally need to be hand-smart. So the hand of a uh, the head of a leader, you need to be smart, you need to read, you need to educate yourself, you need to make sure that you are being sharpened all the time, you need to be intentional about your growth, but equally so, your character, which is your heart, is equally important. And a lot of the times, we've left that out of the way. Uh, you, and, and you can only see by looking at what's been happening in the Zondo Commission and the level of filth and corruption in some of the conversations that entrepreneurs have, okay? So we need we need head smart people that are equally heart smart that that can cause all of that to translate to being hand smart. I'm not sure if that makes any sense. So the it heart does. is important. The heart of the leader is important. The head of the leader is important. And if those two things are right, the hand of the leader, what the leader does, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there'll be exponential growth. And I think wow. those are the type of leaders that we must start to replicate in society. Um, a lot of the times we've only focused on leaders that are only head smart. They've got dog face, they've got the MBAs, they can get the job done, but they lack when it comes to people skills, you know, their, their mm. characters are questionable, their marriages are falling apart, they can't wow. father their children, you know. So those things for me are even more important in this conversation of leadership. So if we, for instance, politically or in fact, anyway, if, if we are going to elect a leader, I think we must do an assessment uh, of their heart and of their lives. We must look at their lives. How is their marriage? How they, How's that leader, you know, treating their children? What are the neighbors saying? What is the maid and the gardener saying? Those things are important, you know, other than just saying what qualifications does this person have? How, what experience does this person have? Because mm. if you marry these two things, I think we can change the direction or the trajectory of where our country is going. Wow, man, that's that's powerful, man. That's so powerful. That's so powerful. So, what's what's the name of the book, by the way? And where can it? Where can people get this book? The name the name of the book. I published the book twenty nineteen. The name of the book is called "The Ultimate Leader Shift." The Ultimate Leader Shift, and that just means that um, you know there must be a shift from how we 
we looked at leadership before to how we are viewing leadership today. So I speak in the book about a series of shifts. Currently, unfortunately, the book is sold out. Wow. Uh, so we must go now for a reprint, of which we'll be doing that early next year. And then it's going to be available from our site. But, the, you know, you know, the ebook is available from Amazon and from our website and all uh, most other platforms. We're also working on um, the, uh, the audio book that's going to be out soon. Wow, man, that's powerful, man. That's powerful, man. Hey, man, I, I totally subscribe to what you said, man. I totally subscribe. So, so in terms of, so as entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurs, you know, of course, these are things that, you know, we, we should, and I mean, we have seen it, that, you know, it, it doesn't work if you are, you know, you are successful in terms of what you're doing, but everything else, you know, back at the ranch is falling apart. And, ultimately to catch up to you because i mean if things like legacy are important you'd find that you don't even have anyone to pass that business down to <laughs> or what you have built i mean we see this all the time uh you know i watch i blew it at times i, I haven't watched it in a while i don't i haven't seen new episodes but but there was this one girl right um it was a it, it was quite a sad case because this girl actually inherited uh, a bus business from the father, right? The father had these buses. Uh, I think it was in Soweto or something. And, and and what happened is that, I mean, when, when they separated from the mom and all these things, it was so bad that he didn't want this girl to go and see the mother, mm. right? So the way that, um, you know, she could actually, the mother would see the daughter is that, she would go to the neighbor's house and the neighbor would pretend as if she's sending the child something at the, you know, at the shop, you know, go and get a Coke and whatever it is. Then that's how, then the daughter would go into the neighbor's house. That's where they would meet with the mother. Mm. But when, when this guy died, right, was you say that, no, you'd see your daughter once, you know, she's out finished school, you know, you confuse her and all this nonsense, what you were saying. But when he died, all those bosses and whatever went to this daughter the mother could not put a single word in to that child to, for sense. She couldn't. Because she was like, who are you? You know, you have not been here. You know, you know a lot of things yeah. happened. But it was got so bad that this girl even sold the plot whereby these buses would be parked, like the garage, right? She even sold that. I mean, all the buses were... Go I mean, it was just pandemonium. Mm. And, and, and I'm like, man... <laughs> You went. You spent your life building all this, and you know, within a year of your death, it's done. You know, the that's day you die, sad. it's finished. Yeah. Not, so, man, I subscribe to what you're saying. Man. No, that's very, very sad, man. Because I think generally, some of us African people are not as intentional as we should be about uh, building generational businesses. I think you know this is one of my controversial views that we are we are comfortable and we are stuck in the spaza shop mentality because you know all of us um or most of us okay let me speak for myself you grew up in the township with lots of spaza shops around you so the best businesses some of the best businesses that you might be exposed to are the spaza shops you know so what's the spaza shop mentality the spaza shop mentality is you know you start a small business it's there um, and you, you know, even the, the nature and the culture of that business is you're not going out to look for clients. You just wait for people to come to you. Okay. So I think, I think we're not intentional about growth and about building businesses, big businesses that we can pass on to our children. Equally so, we are not intentional about incorporating our children and the people that we want to see benefit from these businesses into the businesses from an early stage. Like if you look at your counterparts, um, like for instance, maybe a Jacobus, um, you know, when you are doing first year, um, sometimes, sometimes he's even not in varsity. He's, you know, taking a gap year working in his father's business. During holidays, maybe he's working in his father's business. What is he doing? He's being taught, he's being trained in how to manage the business from an early stage, you know? And so I think I think I think what you're saying is so important, and that's one of the things that I'm trying to 
to even do with my own son. Because I'm not building this business to sell it. I have no intention of selling it. I want, I want to pass it. I want it to be a legacy that is passed down to my children, to my children's children, so that they can can continue the work that we're doing. So I think we need to start thinking about our businesses like that. If I'm building a car wash, how can I build it in such a way that it survives for the next 50 years? It must have been something that dies in the next five years. So what does that mean? That means that my systems must be good because if you're going to pass something down, you're not just passing down brick and water, you're passing down the systems of the business. That means that I must run my books well. That means that you know cash flow management must be good so that this business is passed on in a healthy state because you don't know what tomorrow holds for you. Mm. Mm. No, no, definitely, right? And, and I like what you're saying about the systems themselves. Um, you know, it's it's was once you teach some like your child like the systems and and what exactly you're doing, the heart of what you're doing, the core of what you're doing. You know, I, I think you 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 pass that down to them. So even if the structure of what you're doing, you know, is lost or whatever happens you know, they still have got that, you know, within them in terms of, okay, this is how we run a successful business. This is what we do, you know, and they carry on, you know, they sometimes they move somewhere else and, and they carry on. I mean, in Zim, you know, there was this land redistribution. Those farmers, you know, their children now, they're in Zambia, they, some are coming back, they're doing what they're doing, you know, because what was ingrained within them, as you're saying, is the system, right? To say, this is how we farm and all these things. So when things change, and, you know, there's some shaking, you know, one does not have to worry, you know, when there's mm. crisis, because that seed is already there, you know, that seed will grow again, you know, and things will, will move on. So, man, it's, it's, it's quite interesting. It's quite interesting. So, so, so from, from your side, I mean, so, so how do you, do you also assist uh, entrepreneurs that are out of um, the Eastern Cape? Yes, we do, my brother. Um, we've done quite a lot of work with even people that we haven't, we've never even actually met. Um, that's the beauty of technology. So we've assisted mm. people. Uh, the, the last person we assisted was out in Kimberley and he was starting an NGO and he needed a concept document, you know, that would be done in an excellent way to propose to the municipality. Um, we've assisted people as far as KZN, you know, who have been looking for funding and stuff like that. So obviously, because of technology, we are able to assist um, a whole lot of people across the country, but we are very intentional about the Eastern Cape, and there's a love and a deep passion for us for the Eastern Cape. Not to say that that will be there forever, um, but as long as it's there for now, uh, we'd want to build um, where we can. Mm, mm. No, no, that's 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 powerful. So, guys, man, what we're gonna do? We're gonna accept some, uh, you know, some requests as well. I think that's that's one thing for sure. We're gonna accept some requests. So, guys, if you've got any questions for Mister Joker here, please, uh, you know, request here to join, and 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 let's let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Uh, so I was just thinking. As I say, I mean, we get uh, you just talk about NGOs now, and where a lot of guys could be helped is that you know we do get guys who want to start NPOs, you know, guys who want to you know do tenders and all these things, get funding ready, but they don't necessarily you know you know have the right structures you know to do that. Um, how does one just get about maybe getting those services from you guys? Um, man, the easiest way would just be to pop us an email. And then we'll hop on a Zoom call to see how we can assist. But uh, let me just add that oh, we're currently building um, a, a, a lovely online platform where we're just going to put out a lot of content for free. So there's a lot of courses on how you can get funding that we're going to put out there and how you can start up. I mean, we're going to be working with quite experienced people that are experts in their own industries to develop programs and courses that will be free from the start so that people can, you know, access some of those people um, wherever they are from the comfort of their own homes. Awesome. Awesome. Mr. Gigi, thank you for the gifts. Coach, Nell, thank you for the gifts. Red Sharks, thank you for the gifts as well. Uh, Sia, how are you doing? Hello. 
Okay, maybe maybe it was a mistake here. Okay. Hello. Hi, see how are you? I'm fine. How are you guys? Awesome, 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 man. Any questions here for Lupumlo? Mm, so I'm having this issue. I'll try to explain it. Ne? Mm. So I did not grow up with my father. I only knew my father, let's say, around my 20s. And I went to varsity. I did IT in varsity. So when I come up, uh, this is my final year. And since I'm finishing, my father has taken me inside the family business. And he wants me to run that business. Because the business has been, he, he has been running the business for the past five years. And the books are all over, like paying tax, all of those things that are not in order. So right now he wants me to put everything in order. And I lack the understanding of the structure of the, of the business, the certificate that the business is supposed to have, everything about the business, because I'm new in this industry. Okay, what, what sort of business? So I was it? wondering, it is service and maintenance of earthly machine, like you see, those machines that, that they use in mines, cranes, cars, trucks, service and maintenance, it is there. Okay, wow. And then where are you guys? Sorry? I see. Ya. Okay. I mean, but Lumpumlo, you, you heard some of that. Yeah. No, you know, I think with, with some of these things, there, there are no quick answers. Business is not, it's not about quick answers. There are no quick solutions. So I think some of the... Some of our solutions are process driven. So I think I think one of the things that Usia would have to do, maybe uh, all three of us can hop on a Zoom call just to understand more about uh, what the business is, you know, um, what they have in place, what they don't have in place, so that we can offer a solid, actionable uh, advice to him. You know, I don't think there's any, um, there's no quick fix to something like that. You know, so if you're saying the books are all over the place and stuff like that. Obviously, uh, he'd have to first work on the compliance, you know, sort out the books and all of that. But all of that, I think, would would would, would hop on 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 a Zoom call just to hear more about exactly um, what it is. But here's the thing: I think it's going to be important for Sia to just educate himself a bit more about the business. So if he can, he can just go out and do like a course on in that particular industry, so that he has both. And also some courses on business management so that he has both the business acumen and the, the technical skill set to do what he has to do. Mm. And, and and also just in terms of, you know, the, 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 the authority uh, to actually do these things, like, because if you're being put with this responsibility, it seems like it's a massive responsibility, but uh, do you actually have, like, the 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 power to actually change anything, you know, within this business. Because if you're saying that you haven't been around, now you're being, you know, put in this situation, you know, you know, what what sort of like like authority have you been given and, and what can you do within that situation? Uh see are you still there? Yes, yeah, it went quiet. Uh but yeah man, I'll just follow you see and then we can Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. In terms of the authority, I do have the authority to change anything that I want to change. The only person who's an obstacle to me, it is my the owner of the business the, the owner of the business, my dad, because one of the issues that I, uh I realized while while I was going through the books is that the issue of money management is the one who's responsible for it because it takes the business money for personal use. And it's one of the fights that I've been having with him. And that is my biggest issue because he's really refusing to to understand that business money is supposed to be his own business, not on personal use. He's supposed to get a salary, even though the business may be his, but he's supposed to get a salary. So that is one of the issues because right now I'm going through on, on I'm trying to learn the understanding of filing a tax everything that is required there because I want to fix, because we are behind tax as well, so I want to fix that. Uh, yesterday I was, 
at the office of Sim trying to fix everything there also because we're also behind there. Today I'm going to labor because we're also behind there. I'm trying to fix that as well. Mm, wow. But I think one thing I can just say, I think maybe the Pumlo is something, but you know what? In these situations, I think it's just important to know, you know, because if you're saying you're fighting with the owner of the business, I think don't be, you know, because ultimately for now, the business is his. You know, I think only do. I think we, I think we all work here. Some people have been in corporate. You work with a boss. Yes, you can give your suggestions. But ultimately, that boss is the one who's responsible. And it becomes, you know, as Herb Nature is saying, it becomes an impossible fight and you get frustrated. I think you just be there and help as much as you can and say, okay, these are my suggestions. So you are making suggestions. That's what you are doing. And, and it's very important not to now then get offended because you already know that, okay, this is what I can do or this is, will be accepted or not. So, so you just have to protect yourself as well in terms of your emotions and energy and stuff. And just know that, hey man, ultimately, he's the one who's 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 the owner and he's responsible. I don't know, Mister Jog, I've got any another view or yeah. No, no, I agree with you, my brother. I agree. I think, see, uh, I think you can connect with us and we can jump on a call and we can maybe take this conversation further, you know, and see where we can assist. But also. <clears throat> I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you told us where you are, but go and connect with organizations like your CEDA, Small Enterprise Development Agencies, and, uh, you know, they would offer free business advice and all of that, and they would connect you to further support. And, you know, for me, let, let me share part of my testimony. I've received a lot of assistance from organizations like, in my past, the NYDA, the, the Small Enterprise Development Agency in the Eastern Cape, you've got the Eastern Cape Development Corporation, ECDC. So I've made use of government agencies, you know, um, that are there to assist small businesses. Yes, it's come at a price because it's a huge headache because, you know, sometimes these people don't care. But when I look back, I think, man, it has been worth it. So I'd advise you to go out and knock on those doors, you know, and, and see what assistance they can provide you to. Awesome, Sia. So, so Sia, yeah, I've followed you. So you can probably, I think, follow me back or whatever. Then you can, we can get your details and can connect you as well with uh, Lupumlo. Maybe we can have that Zoom call to just further understand. But but I think you did say where you are, but the point is, I think the problem is we didn't hear because of network. Yeah, it is, it is Jamiston, how thing? Oh, in Jamiston. Okay, no, that's cool, yeah. that's cool, that's cool. All right, guys, uh, no, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for, for sharing. Uh, guys, if anyone else wants to request, uh, and also if you guys want to, maybe if you can comment in the comment section, you know, what you'd want, uh, you know, maybe, you know, Pumlo to touch on when he comes back, when he has time. Because if you, as you heard, the man, he's, 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 he's knows he's been through a lot of stuff. He, he knows uh, a lot of things, government funding, tenders, and all these things. So maybe if you guys can comment in the, you know, the top five will be our next live. <laughs> that would, that's the next topic we'll discuss, you know, when we get Mr. Joga's availability. So please, man, comment in there in terms of uh, where, what exactly you'd want us to discuss. Uh, Sia, thank you very much, mate. Uh, yeah, so as we wait for those comments, man, as we, as we wait for, for those comments, uh, how do you start a similar business but not under the funding bracket? Which similar business? Uh, is, is, is this guy is doing it? So yeah, CPG, just, just clarify which similar business and feel free to request guys we can request just feel free to request and let's discuss i think we've got got about you know six minutes left uh then we can call it a day so business consultancy i don't know do you need uh any sort of funding to do business consultancy i don't know i don't think you do man uh, i don't think you do look <clears throat> in my story Funding came along the way, and I was already making my money um, when when I when when I when I um, had received the funding. So I think in terms of business consulting, it's a, it it is a knowledge based business. So obviously you do need to equip yourself because 
the value that you add to your clients depends on the depth of your knowledge. So you, you, you need to have the right knowledge. You need to have the right relationships. You need to be able to make things happen for your clients as well. So I think if you can, uh, and, and I think the beauty of, about such a business is you can start it as a, high, a side hustle tool whilst you are working somewhere. And then you can see your, you see your clients after hours. And the more you build that clientele, uh, when you get to a stage where those people, you know, pay you the same or more money than what you're earning, then you can take the risk and just jump. But yeah, it's, business consulting is quite a nice business to start. But as long as I think, um, as long as you are able to provide some sort of um, proof of the quality of the value that you're adding to your clients. So people want to see. So if I'm saying I'm Lupumno, I assist people to get funding. I must, I must say to you, go and talk to so-and-so. This is where he was. This is where he is now after he met me. So that's, that's, that becomes very important. That's going to make you more money. Is the, the more that you change people's lives and the more that you add value to, to other people. Awesome, awesome, awesome. CPG? Okay, sorry about that. Um, I wasn't clear on the question. But um, what I did is that I started something similar to what he's doing. So my own is ST Business Consultants, but I'm fairly new in the industry. So I wanted to just get an insight of maybe more of not starting, but growing the business because I also started it as a side hustle because of the LLB concept of not being able to get a job. So I said, let me use my skills and um, try and get some money because like you said, it's about making money. Yeah. So what I did was I started doing uh, like business startup solutions and virtual assistant stuff and administration. I like that when he, uh, when I asked the question you already, when I entered the live, he was already answering part of the question to say, it is actually a knowledge-based uh, industry. But now, um, how do you now grow the business from just being a company registering company, I mean, business and, you know, supplying office consumables, because I do contract drafting also as a service. And I went and taught myself branding. So I do a bit of graphic design. So I was actually excited when uh, Lupumlo was just mentioning all these things because they, when it comes to knowledge, there is no limit as far as, I mean, to what you can do. So now when it comes to growth, because now I feel I've gotten to a point where I'm just stagnant. I'm on level two if out of five. I've just went started first base, second base, and then I'm now stuck. I don't even know how to now approach when it comes to the consultants of the business. The branding side is doing okay. I'm also teaching myself, I mean, going for a digital uh, marketing course so that I can uh, incorporate from the company registration to the, uh, the whole business consultation concept for me is the registration of the company compliance and everything, then the branding and the what do I call it? The brand development and compliance being your business plan, business profile and everything. And then I move because I've got a stage to this consultancy. First the registration, then the compliance of whatever the person is registering the business in. For example, let's talk about the what, food industry when the health and the health certificate and all that. I assist them because I noticed that also part of consultancy, you need to have a network that's why there's no limit of what you can do because I call it outsourcing. Well, sometimes I subcontract because now I have to, you know, expand and do everything and anything that I can do and use the networks that I have that I've built uh, to make money. So now I'm trying to actually now take it to the next level uh, to see how best I can now bring them all together, but have a system. I think what I'm lacking is a system and marketing. Yeah, I think that's my question. So maybe how do I take it to the next level? Because I've got the clear understanding of the vision that I have. But now I'm stuck. Yeah, cool. that's my question. Uh, so if you can assist me with it. Yeah, man. Firstly, congratulations on, on getting started. Uh, you know, I think uh, it's always good to hear someone doing something similar, making progress. 
you know. Um, I'd love to, I just followed you. I'd love to connect with you and uh, maybe to also jump on a Zoom call so that we can just chat and see how we can assist each other, you know. Um, but I think, uh, you know, group and thinking about what you're saying is partly in one. Mm. Sorry, bro, the network, I think it's just. It's you. you can repeat that, bro. Okay, I was just saying that I'm I'm just part of another mentorship group, and I think part of the answer is 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 is, is what you just said. Okay, so he, in in this mentorship group, uh, I think we had a session last week, and we we're speaking about how you can scale your business. So there's a company in the US called Scalable. I think Scalable. So just go out and look at Scalable, and they do research and work with entrepreneurs on how they can scale their business. So they speak about the seven levels of scaling a business, you know? And the first three are, you need to get 10 consistent clients. And I think you're already there. Secondly is automating your growth. And I think, um, I think that's where you are now. You want to automate your growth. So what is automating your growth? Automating your growth means that you are starting to build a system that is automated, that can operate in your absence, that can make you money, even in this consulting business. And even that is not an easy thing to do because even besides the client, you've got to build, you've got to find your niche. You've got to be able to, um, you know, um, find tools. For me, that has helped me a lot. So I've got a, um, a number of tools that I use that save me time, that save me money, that make me money, and that contribute to the automation of the growth of my business. I'm not sure if that makes any sense, okay? Then the third, the third level he speaks about is, uh, if you want to scale, level number three is, you must improve your operating systems. So I think those two are important, automating your growth and improving your operating mm -hmm. systems. And, mm -hmm. um, and that's something that you just mentioned, that you don't, uh, you need to improve your systems. You know, so systems are important, I think. So I use one of the systems that I use, uh, which is a CRM, is called monday.com. I'm sure you guys have heard of it or you, you know it. But I've tried a whole host of other systems, but it helps me so, so much because on that platform, I've got um, automated um, things that are there that, you know, increase the amount of work that I have to put in. I'm not, I'm not sure if that makes any sense. You know, it does. So, it's, so instead of having to spend maybe 10 hours on a business plan, I've got wow. certain tools and certain things that I can use that decrease that 10 hours to an hour or two, but the yeah. value is still the same. So automating your growth and uh, building your beta systems is important, but I'd love to, I'd love to connect with you uh, to chat further. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, CPG. So, so yeah, I think uh, we had a question from Otilia and Lusaka. They're asking, do you also assist people out of South Africa? Man, I've had... Conver uh, interestingly, we're setting up something in Swaziland at the moment um, that mm -hmm. we're going to... I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to launch it soon. Um, we've, I've, I've, had, I've got friends and colleagues in other parts of the, you know, SADC region, Botswana, Mozambique, and all of that. But uh, we've never really done anything. We've tried doing stuff, but it's never really worked, you know? So mm. I'd, I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd be keen to jump on a call with someone from outside of South Africa. And here's the thing with me. If I can't assist, I'll let you know that, hey, man, I can't assist, and I'll refer you to a better person that can assist you. So I'll, I'd be more than happy to jump on a call with someone from outside of South Africa to see how we can assist. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, hi, uh, Muzimshe. How are you doing? Uh, I'm fine, thanks. And how are you? Awesome, 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 man. Any questions for Lupumlo here, man? No, I just joined, so I guess I missed out. But um, can I connect with him later on? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. All right, guys. So if okay, you missed the... So if you've just joined, uh, you missed what we told. We're gonna upload this this live on YouTube, guys. We're gonna upload the live on YouTube. Uh, so yes, what you wanna do is you go to my link tree. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel. 
so that you get to you know you get to catch up on this uh, live as well so man i'm just looking at some of the comments here i think the big issue here which we can talk to about it and i also wanted to talk to about it is just uh you know tenders right tenders 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 i, I think we get i think next time when you got time we can talk about tenders bro in terms of you know and how, how do you you know, where do you find tenders? How do you make sure you got the right stuff? You know, how do you meet the requirements and just the attitude needed with regard to that? I think that would be an interesting one. I don't know what you think, mate. Yo, that would be cool, man. I was all, almost scammed. I got a tender this other time for something during COVID and I had to pay another company 150,000 rands and I mm. almost, you know, took out a loan to go and pay that money only to find out that it was a scam. But the paperwork was legit. That government department that I was going to deliver to was, you know, it seemed legit, you know, right telephone line, someone answering. So I think it would be great to to, to chat about that uh, whenever whenever there's time. Awesome, man. Awesome. Sorry, uh, Nido Creative, how do you get in touch with uh, Mr. Joker? I mean, what's that? Is that Tanzania? Which That's was... Botswana. That's what's what I'm sorry. Man, I was just getting confused. Maybe it was ever wise or maybe I'm just biased. But anyway, uh Njabu says this from Swaziland. Um yes, Nido you also had a, another question about I think legal compliance to get in the South African market. Maybe you can just request Nido. You can just request. Um then yeah, we can get it from there. Please follow him and let's uh, and man, talking about these scams, right? So, so it wasn't these guys, these, uh, you know, these these guys who came to assistance in our office, and and they were saying it wasn't a labor issue, but they were saying that we got a tender, we got a tender uh, in one of the provinces, right? And this was to supply, you know, office furniture to not office furniture, I think it was school furniture. That was the tender to supply school furniture at one of these schools that was being built. So on further exam, so we, we ask questions, right? A lot of people, they ask questions. Then it so happens that they, they were subcontractors, right? And even worse, they were sub-subcontractors. Because what actually <laughs> happened is, but people will be walking around and, you know, I got a tender, I got a tender. And they like, they like throwing the names, you know, oh, this MEC or this what, 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 you know, name dropping and all these things. So... So what happened is that the 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 what's this the person who got the actual tender was some ten key company I think in PTA, right? They then subcontracted another company which I think is in Bloom or whatever, but this company actually has the equipment, right? They actually do the construction. So and what what, what then happened is that so that that lady of that company which does the which was the the subcontractor the main subcontractor. She then, after building the schools, they said to her, you know what, actually, we need furniture for these schools. Then she jumped the main guy. Then she said, okay, let me now get other guys to do this stuff. Then she got those guys who came to us. But they were saying, ah, we got the tender, we got the tender. You know, that's what they're saying. I'm like, guys, you are far off from this thing. But anyway, the bottom line is they couldn't get their money from yeah. this woman, right? And when they go to to whatever the department of education that dude we didn't give this contract to you guys yeah. we didn't give you like you guys are far off the chain yeah. and it was such a mess right but i mean things like that i mean i mean what are your thoughts on that i mean this subcontracting stuff and and people saying and, and even if you look at the amount so i said okay you're saying this one owes you so much like the amount of money they were charging for a desk, I mean, it was ridiculous, man. It was out of this world, and and I think this woman just agreed, knowing that she was not gonna pay them, uh, and, and whatever. That's that's what she agreed, knowing that. And I mean, what are your thoughts on that, man? Man, that's crazy, man. You know, I think South Africa is very. It's 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 we are. <sighs> Our government has been very polluted by a lot of corruption. So I think we entrepreneurs, we always have to be cautious um, about what we get ourselves into, um, you know, and, you know, you being a lawyer or an LLB graduate, you know that the paperwork is always important even before you, 
you do anything. So get your paperwork in order and make sure that um, if anything happens, you've got some leg to stand on. But I think it's important for us to find the right legitimate places um, to do work for. I don't think a lot of people will approach this mindset of saying, I'm not going to do work with the government. I'll just hustle on my own because it's corrupt, blah, blah, blah. I don't think that's the approach, especially if you're starting out and you need money. You need money to pay the bills. You need money to pay your people. So however you can make money legally, I think you have to be able to go out and make money legally. But I think you, you'll have to, once you get, you, you'll, here's the thing, you'll have to find your rhythm instead of getting tenders. And what I mean by that, you'll, you'll pick up that, oh, that department, um, you know, they're efficient, they've got credible people, you know, they don't, you know, flight processes, you know, they've, they've got quality people. So I can go and check on their website and, and I can talk to their people from time to time to find out what work I can do for them. So there are those, and that's something that you as an entrepreneur have to learn for yourself. The more work you get, the more tenders you get, is the more you see, hey, I don't, I mustn't work with company A or department A, I must work with department B. I've got companies that owe me money for work I did about three months ago. I'm sitting here sure. three months later, I haven't been paid, you know? And as an entrepreneur that employs people, cash flow is important to me. So it, it's very important for us to see, okay, this you can't work with, this you can work with, and that all comes by experience. So I think it would be interesting to have this conversation. Um, awesome, man. Hey, fantastic. Thank you very much for your time, bro. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, much love to you, bro. I uh, think let's set it up and let's see. So guys, if you want to know next time we go live, Mr. Joker, please join our WhatsApp group. The link is in the bio. Uh, you don't have to worry about a lot of people posting because only admins can post. Then we can talk about, you know, tenders, how to get them, what to look out for, you know, what, what are the nitty gritties. So, hey, fantastic. Thank you, bro. Thank you for joining us. man. Thanks a lot, my brother. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Angel, thank you for the likes. Tabo, thank you for the likes, man. Uh, Lady Poppy, thank you for the likes. Uh, Daddy Cool, thank you for the likes. Zinsi, Tabo, uh, and Luja, thank you for the likes. Uh, Ref, so Queen D, Zidumbe, thank you for the likes. Rita, Noxy, C's with CPG, OZM, Menzi, thank you for the likes, guys. Much love to all of you guys. We're liking, sharing, and doing the most. Uh, much love to you guys, man. Hey, guys, have a fantastic weekend. Let's do this again next week. So, guys, yesterday we had a fantastic live uh, with Jackie the Farmer talking about how to win in the poultry business markets. Guys, people are doing the most, man. Markets, how to get started in the likes. I'm going to post that live in the YouTube channel, the link to that uh, into the WhatsApp group. So I'm going to post the link in the WhatsApp group. <laughs> it's just now. The live is there. It's now uploaded. You guys said we need these lives on YouTube, guys. So now I've, I'm doing the most for you guys. I'm waking up very early to do this stuff for you. So check out the channel. The lies, man. <laughs> Since you requested them. So, and do the most, man. Subscribe, share them. Do what you have to do, man. It's very insightful conversation. So, man, it is what it is. And I will also uh, post Mr. Pumlo's details on WhatsApp, their websites, and how to get in touch with them, and all these things, their YouTube channels and the likes. So, guys, join the WhatsApp group right now. The link is in the bio. Anyway, guys, let's do this again on Monday, guys. Always it's going to be some good stuff next week. So we meet every weekday between Monday and Friday, 8 to 9. Thanks, Bucks King. So much love to everyone, guys. Let's do this. Remember, our dreams are valid. Let's keep pushing. Cheers. Bye-bye.